Okay. There it is, brother. Blessed and highly flavored with a overflow of favor. Ah. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. God help me. He will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews. Every day. Hebrews chapter 10. Hallelujah. In verse 24, Hebrews 10, 24. I didn't plan on going here, but that's what Dad said, go. <laughs> Is everybody there? Cool. Is it hot in here or what? <laughs> Where did I say to go? <laughs> okay, 24, right? All right. Let's speak it together. Let us consider one another in order to what? Stir up. Stir up. Everyone say stir up. Stir up love and good works. Stir up love and good works. Need to stir that up. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. Why? Because assembling of ourselves helps to stir up. Amen? Amen? Stirring up. Stirs up love and then produces good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. What day is that? The return of the Lord. Verse 26. If we what? Sin. If we sin willfully. In other words, you chose to. Everybody has the power to choose. If we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. In other words, protection has been lifted. Why? Because there's been an infection. Sin is an infection. It is a defilement. So when sin is in, when sin, now there's so much variety of sin that people don't know about. Sin is actually the presence of evil. And the presence of evil is always trying to influence, influence us so that we agree with them. And when we agree with them, we touch something called unclean. And when we touch it unclean, we act. And that act is called a transgression. And when we do that act, a curse comes on us and our family line until it is broke. Then our children inherit it. So if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains protection. But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who's rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse, how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? Counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Spirit of grace. I call this quite serious. See, people don't take this so seriously. They have no idea what is happening or getting ready to happen. See, there is either protection or infection. One or the other. Does everybody get it? 
Because you're either protected or you're infected. Amen? For we know him who said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Hmm. Again, this is an area. Infection is an area where it's damaging purity. It's a defilement. Turn to Psalm 119. It's contamination. Psalm 119 and first eight verses. How many of you want to stay under the protection? Then you can't get infected. Amen. Blessed are the undefiled in a way. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. So cursed means that a person's been defiled. And when there's a curse, the protection is lifted. There's no protection. Does everybody get it? Unless you repent right away. Defile brings contamination, or what we call infection. It's sin, disobedience, and rebellion. Anything to associate it with that is called sin. Amen? And any time that there's associated with sin, an agreement of sin, or even approval of sin, it brings contamination, defilement, and infection, and the protection of the Lord begins to lift off an individual. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts, what? Diligently, that means consistently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with an uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. So he was saying, look at blessed are the undefiled. Why? Because they walk in protection. They walk in the law, the word of truth. They seek, they worship with all their might and all their heart. There's no iniquity. They depart from evil. They don't agree with sin. They don't approve sin. They don't approve Perverse jokes, they don't approve those things because it can devour a person. They keep the laws, his precepts, in a diligently, but means consistently. And there's a desire to learn even more. So we learn that way we can keep, we can obey, and we can be led. We can be kept, we can obey, and we can be led. Blessed are the undefiled. Why? Because they stay under their protection. But cursed is the defiled because they lose the protection. Now, many times people don't know that they've lost the protection or it gradually lifts. Does everybody understand that? Because sometimes people tie the hands of God and don't even know it. God stops and they're still going. In verse 65, he says, You have dealt with, well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Wait a minute. He says, Before he was afflicted, he went astray. Why did he go astray? Because he touched something unclean. 
Amen? And he went astray because the protection began to lift. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I do what? Keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. Why? He said, that I may learn your statutes. So his affliction he used to teach him. The law of your mouth is better, than, better to me than thousands of coins, gold, and silver. In other words, the Lord dealt with him according to the word. He was afflicted because the protection was lifted. He went astray because he was infected. And there was no longer protection. In Proverbs 10, Proverbs chapter 10. When an individual is defiled, it makes them foul, unclean, or polluted. Sin brings defilement. If you and I could see sin in its true form, it would be disgusting. It is foul. It's unclean. It's contamination. It's polluted. And it brings infection. In Proverbs 10, verse 17. Somebody there? Let's speak it. He who keeps instruction is in the way of life. But he refuses correction, does what? Goes astray because correction brings direction and direction brings protection. So when an individual keeps resisting correction, that means that the protection is lifted more and more and more and more to the enemy takes them right out. Until they're willing to turn. See, repentance means they turn. That means now they're willing to accept correction and submit to it. That's why the word says submit to God, then you can resist the devil. But so many times people look at correction in the area of judgment, offense, and all of these other things which is nothing but soulish and carnal. When God corrects us, what does he say? He says, God chastens those he loves. Why? Because he knows we're going to end up in trouble. And again, we should be looking for correction. Not running from it. Not rejecting it. We should look for correction. Why? Because God loves you. But see, the carnal mind in the soulish arena, because it's not fully converted and the enemy's got access, looks at correction as rebuke. Bad. Offensive. That's all got ungodly influence. That's demonic influence. We should look for correction and be grateful that we're being corrected. Amen? That's a, that's a sign of immaturity in an unconverted soul. Keep instructions in a way of life. Let correction bring direction and protection. Wouldn't you like someone to warn you if you were going to go drive into a big pit? Amen. How about walking to a fire? I mean, you'd want someone to warn you. First Corinthians, or James 3, I'm sorry. James 3. Blessed are the undefiled. Why? Because they're protected. 
Protection or infection? James 3. Oh, glory. Verse 9. In that song that we sang, Dying Star, talks about how we can be the worst idol. People are fighting for their life and don't even realize it. When they reject correction, they're fighting for their own life. That means pride is protecting self. Amen? That's not but stinky pride. James 3, verse 5. Is everybody there? Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of what? Iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it does what? It will defile the whole body. So you better be careful of what you say. And sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by what? Hell, that means influenced. Does everybody see this? For every kind of beast and bird or of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can contain the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. <laughs> With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. If you do not have dominion over your tongue, somebody has control over you. Then it ain't God. Amen? There's another ruling voice there that's ruling. The tongue can defile. What you say can infect you, and that will remove the protection. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Grumbler and complainers. You know why? Because people that grumble and complain all the time are ungrateful. They've forgotten what God has done for them. Oh, yes. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 9. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is what? Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with what? Gold. In other words, you're not going to build on the foundation of God with the things of the world. <laughs> that ain't going to work. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet as so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, if anyone contaminates it, If anyone allows it to be infected, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. 
Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Hmm. Defiles the temple. Remember, we are the temple of God. If we build on the ways of the world, it will become defiled. It will become infected. The only way to build on this is the ways of God. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4.25. Is everybody okay? You're either protected or you're infected. Let's speak it together. Ephesians 4.25. Therefore, putting away what? Lying. Will that infect you? Yes, it's sin, isn't it? Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil. <laughs> let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. And let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the protection will lift. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you and me. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit because that is, well, you grieve him by being defiled or infected. Amen? And then we lose protection. Again, many people are, are walking around and have no idea. The only thing that is protecting them is somebody else's prayer. Does everybody get it? Somebody else's prayer is the only, one, only thing that's protecting some people. In 2 Corinthians 6. Second Corinthians six in verse sixteen. Second Corinthians six verse sixteen. In what agreement? Everyone say agreement. agreement. Idols and an idols anything that is between you and God, like yourself, you can, your vehicle, your job, anything can become an idol to you. Your spouses, your children, anything can become an idol to you. What do you chase more? What are you after more? What do you spend more time at? When you begin to see that level, you'll find out what your idols are. Are you a chaser and a worshiper of the Lord? Do you fight all the way to the end? Or are you led by your feelings? Oh, that's enough. I'm done. It's time to go chase something else. It's because there's an idol. Amen? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I'll walk among them. I'll, I'll be their God, and they shall be my people. If you do this, if you what? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is what? Unclean. Why? Because it brings infection and you lose protection. Then I will receive you and I'll be a father to you. And you'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. 
Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit and perfecting holiness in the fear of God. In the fear of God. Idols, associations, they can defile and contaminate and infect us. Then we lose the protection. You know, people must be careful. And it's not about a religious thing. You got to be careful what you associate with. You got to be careful what you allow in your ears and your eyes. You got to be careful of what you approve of. You got to be careful. And you also must be careful what trap the enemy is putting before you. You will not know that trap if you're not connected to the presence of God. If you're not one that is connected to the presence of God and His Word and His truth, and you're not an individual that's setting God before you in everything that you do, then you're in trouble. And it's just a matter of time where the enemy's going to wipe you out. It's just a matter of time. Proverbs 16. It's amazing how many people can endure a football game and scream and yell the whole thing and watch that pigskin go up and down. And they come to worship service. And they can't even ha ha handle it halfway through because the pigskin is their idol. Believing the devil's not going to come up to you and tell you that. Hey, man, you know, uh, the pigskin's your idol. He's not going to tell you that. He's going to keep baiting, baiting, and baiting. And he's just waiting and waiting and waiting until he pulls it. It's like bass fishing, big mouth bass fishing. Proverbs 16, is everybody there? In verse 17. Proverbs 16, 17. Oh, hallelujah. The highway, the upright is to depart from evil. Hello. And he who keeps his way preserves what? His soul. 18. Are you ready? Pride goes before destruction. Why does it go before destruction? Because protection's lifting. Amen? And a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be the humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Pride goes before destruction. No protection. Why? Because pride protects self. That's why people argue. They're just protecting themselves. They're Protect self. Is everybody okay? First Timothy six. One of the things that people don't realize is unfulfilled vows. Did you ever tell somebody you'd pick them up at a certain time and you didn't? That's because you lied. That brings a curse but you're not sensitive enough to the Spirit when he says, man, you need to repent for not doing, for doing that. Anything that you say and you don't fulfill is a lie. Amen? It's real simple. You just repent. Lord, for, forgive me for not fulfilling that vow. I put it under the blood and ask for your forgiveness. But you still reap. Somebody get it? You still reap. You may be forgiven, but you still have a reaping to do. The quicker you repent, the less reap. The longer it takes to repent, the more reap. Some of us are still reaping after 20 years of following the Lord. Is everybody okay? But God will use it for your training. He'll work it to the good. If you love Him and you're still following Him, People bring on curses on themselves and they have no idea because of their lack of connection. They can't hear God. They're not sensitive enough to his presence and to his voice. 
That's why he so much desires that we have such a relationship with him, that we are close to him. Think about this. If you put Jesus in front of you and everything that you did, you think we would do the things that we do? Heck no. At least I hope not. There'd be conviction already before you even did it. As soon as you thought it, boom. Oh, snap. Don't do that. 1 Timothy 6, verse 9. Is everybody okay? Yeah. You're very quiet tonight. <laughs> but those who desire to be what? Rich. Fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish, harmful lusts which draw men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of curses <laughs> or evil. For which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O oh man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness and godliness and faith and love and patience and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of an eternal life to which you were called and have confessed a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Money seems to be the one thing that really misleads people. It's big bait. Because everything in the world unfortunately, relies on money. People are so concerned that they can't get something because they don't have the money. But if you're really connected with the Lord, you're going to know that he's the one that's going to bring it anyways. And he will provide what is needed in due time. That's why the word says, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Why? Because if you're, for, if you're practicing righteousness, then all things will be added to you. Everything is coming one way or another. You don't have to work 16 hours to get something. It will come if you're truly connected. That's what his desire is. But so many of God's children are so deceived and caught up and still about themselves and not about kingdom. They got one foot in and one foot out. And not two feet in. But I'll tell you, when you get two feet in, it's totally different. Totally different. Oh, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Let's go a little further. Ephesians 4. Either that the fan got a lot louder, I don't know. <laughs> Ephesians 4. In verse 17. Somebody there? Ephesians 4, verse 17. This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your what? Of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Let me explain to you first of all, the battle, it's over thoughts. The battle is in the mind. There is a battle over voices. Who's the ruling voice in your temple? Who's the ruling voice in your house? Who's the ruling voice? Which one is leading you? Again, the battle is over thoughts. And if you're not willing to monitor your thoughts, 
You'll be easily swayed and misled. You'll be chasing dreams and fantasies that can never be fulfilled. Never. Colossians 2. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Rick came in my office this morning and showed me the mashed potato. <laughs> Y'all missed that. Should have been here. What was it, Sunday? That was snapping. Colossians 2, verse 18. Let's speak it together. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false what? Humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind or imagination, and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grow with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why as though living in the world do you still subject yourself to regulations or the ways or the entanglements of the world? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with using according to the commandments and doctrines of what? Men. He's saying, move out of the doctrines of men and come into my doctrine. These things indeed have a, an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Puffed up, prideful, religious, infectious. Let me share with you that religion spirits are infectious spirits. Thank God we're not religious. Because they have a false sense of humility. There's a false doctrine there. It's a form of godliness, but it denies the power of God. Listen, without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have no power. Amen? No power. There's people who have willpower, but, but your willpower only goes so far. You can't cast out a devil with your willpower, let me tell you. That devil will strip you naked. 2 Corinthians 10. Ooh. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse something 4. Again, where is the battle? It's in the mind. There's a big fight over what you accept in your thoughts and what you reject. 2 Corinthians 10, 4. Is everybody there? 10, 4. Did you get it? <laughs> Ten four, everybody said, yeah. Or is it over and out? I don't know. What's that? Big Joe Mama or something like that? I don't know. What's the code things? I don't know all that stuff. Anyways. Verse four. For the weapons of our warfare are not what? carnal but mighty in God for pulling down with strongholds which are memory lies memory lies are something you accepted you agreed with which is brings a what an infection casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself of the knowledge of God bringing every what thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and then being ready to punish disobedience and your obedience is fulfilled. So you can't punish something of the demonic forces unless you're obedient to God. That's why the word says submit to God, then you can resist the devil. 
People are trying to attack the devil when they're out of order. It ain't going to work. And then they blame the devil for everything that happens to them when they brought it on themselves. It's a battle of mind. It's a battle of thoughts that defile and contaminate and bring infection. And when we agree in touch with these things, protection begins to lift. Second John. Second John. Oh, yes. Verse 9. 2 John, verse 9. Protection or infection? Whoever transgresses, transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. There it is. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, don't receive him into your house, nor greet him. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. So when those watchtower dudes come out, and those other guys, you know, on those bicycles and... They come out and try and knock on your door and those Jehovah Witnesses and they don't even know Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. They always try to bring you, give you something. Don't accept it. Give them something. Amen? Man, I used to wait from them all the time. I used, I used, to, I used to, I had this whole teaching all set up for them all the time. It was about the name of Jesus who is God. They're, they're, the word Jehovah just means God. That's not his name. That's why it's called Jehovah God, Jehovah uh, Rafi, Jehovah, it's everything else. Because it means God, healer, God, deliverer, God, savior, God's presence. That's what Jehovah means. Does everybody get it? But God is everything. And he put it all in one package. Called Jesus. That's why Jesus said to him, if you see me, you see the Father. Hello. So I had this whole teaching for them. Every time they'd come, they'd try to give me that. I'd try and give them this. And I would pray with them. I'd start praying in the spirit. The only thing I saw was the bottom of their feet. I'd chase them down the street. Hey, you forgot this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Actually, I had a couple come in one time and sit and listen. They never came back, but you know. they were stern in them. Then they hung around with the, you know, the other thieves that steal God's truth. Does everybody understand that? That's why I don't, I don't come back because they're associations. Yeah, these two guys showed up on bicycles. I got them in and sat them down. She gave my testimony and everything. They were like, wow, we'd like to come back and talk to you. I said, good. I said, I wanted to tell them, don't have, go back to where you're going. You're going to lose it. And they did. Anyway. So if anyone comes to your house with another doctrine, don't greet them. Why? For he who greets them shares in his evil deeds. Does everybody see that? Good. James 4. James 4. Verse 1. Where do, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? That's the old man, that fight. You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you don't ask correctly. 
And when you ask, you don't receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your flesh or your ungodly desires. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Why? Because friendship with the world will contaminate you. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Very simple. Or do you think the scripture says in vain that the spirit who dwells in us yearns what? Jealousy. God is a jealous God. But he gives more grace, therefore he, God says, he resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Therefore submit to God, then you're able to resist the devil and then he will flee from you. Friendship with the world will contaminate you. Joshua 7. Joshua 7. Oh, happy day. Oh, where are you, Josh? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, where are you? Is anybody there yet? I'm not. Joshua left my Bible. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Come on. <sighs> Having a hard time finding Joshua. Oh, happy day. It's in the J's, right? Uh, it's next to Judges, isn't it? There you are. Joshua 7. Told you it was in the J's, Judges. Joshua 7, verse something. 10. Let's speak it. So the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has what? Sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have even taken some of the what? Accursed things, and have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own stuff. Now, what is an accursed item? Anything that draws demonic activity. People are still holding on to their old clothes and all of their old bars, all of the old things that they used to have. Those are cursed items. The old marijuana buckle leaves, you know, and beer bottles. Oh, that's antique. No, it isn't. It's an accursed item. All their dragons and all the other stuff, Pokemon and all of these accursed games and all kinds of stuff. They still have pictures of them partying when they were yeah, looking all demonized. Those things are all accursed items. It says, look it. Therefore, verse 12, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. Hello. Why? Because protection lifted because of accursed items. But turn their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Get up, sanctify the people, and say, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow because thus says the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in your midst. O Israel, you cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. Does everybody get it? Yes, but it's been inherited down for years. Yes, that curse has been destroying your family for so long. Aren't you going to get rid of it now? Amen? Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5, then one more scripture. Oh, Hallelujah. 1 John, John chapter 5. It's, it's 
next to Second John. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? First John chapter 5, verse 18. And we know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he has been born of God, keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him. So there's a state of born again. It's a state of being of being born again where you are walking in the spirit. You are connected to the presence of God. Jesus is always before you. You are looking for conviction. You are looking to be corrected. Why? Because you want to maintain a pure heart. You want to maintain clean hands. You don't want that protection to be lifted. You want to decree Psalm 91 and stay in there. He who dwells in the secret place. But listen, if, the, if the, something's not under the blood, then you're infected. And then there's no protection. It begins to lift. Does everybody understand it? In verse 20, we know, uh, in verse 19, we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God, eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from what? Idols. <laughs> keep yourself from yourself. Psalm 15. Psalm 15 ought to seal this. Protection or infection. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Verse 1. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy place. That's protection in there, isn't it? What does it say? He who walks what? Uprightly who works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue. Why? All of these things defile, don't they? They bring infection. Nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, and whose eyes a vile person is what? Despised because he does not approve those things. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. Because he's a God pleaser, not a man pleaser. He who does not put out his money at usury doesn't manipulate with money. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. In other words, money can't buy him. He who does these things shall never be what? Moved. You will not be moved if you stay under the protection. Does everybody get it? You won't be moved if you stay under their protection. But I can tell you that the devil will make paper airplanes with messages on them. He'll fly them over that wall of protection. If you pick it up and read it, burn it. Cast it down. Get rid of it. But don't agree with it. And don't, when you go to a Chinese restaurant, do not read this fortune cookie. It's amazing. And how many believers still do the horoscope and fortune cookies? not realizing they bring a curse on themselves. And then they don't repent for them. Your fortune has already been predestined. Jesus predestined it for you. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace of every area that we have brought contamination, defilement, or infection. Lord, we choose not to look back, but go forward. We ask anything that has caused us to have the protection lifted and brought harm to ourselves or our family in any way whatsoever, or our businesses or anything else, we ask for your forgiveness, that you'd wash us with the blood and cleanse us and heal us with the stripes of Jesus, and that your protection would be restored as we decree Psalm 91 to each and every one in this room in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.
Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.